So our next speaker is Mike Chobanian, president of Blockchain Association of Ukraine, uh, Crypto Heaven, how it will work without populism. Thank you. Thank you. Gamar Joba, Tbilisi. Rogorachar. На этом заканчивается все, что я помню на грузинском. Um, language, English or Russian? Raise your hands. Russian? English? Please raise your hands for English. We don't have a translation in English? Okay, so English. Russian. Okay, just a few. Okay, in that case, sorry, in Russian. Um, yeah. Where is the clicker? Украинскую мову. Так, давайте украинскую мову. Thank you. All right. So, um, my name is uh, Michael Chibanyan. I'm from Ukraine. Uh, this is basically all my projects. I'm going to talk about the serious things. So, before I do that, it, it's ideal that you know who I am and what I do and why you should at least listen to something what I'm going to say. So the, uh, the key project that I'm leading is uh, Kuna. It's an exchange in, in Ukraine. Uh, uh, it's a local exchange, but uh, we're working on expanding into countries including Georgia, Armenia, Azerbaijan, Turkey, and so on. Um, we have the blockchain hub. This is the physical um, hub for uh, all the blockchain projects. We have the conference room, meetups rooms. We always uh, hold the uh, meetups there and conferences. Um, I have the uh, crypto mat. This is uh, where you put the fiat money in and you get the crypto. You have a few of them in, uh, in Belize, I know. Uh, the association, this is something new and uh, this is uh, my ampua for today. And uh, KUAH is the project Crypto Grivna. So it's a stable coin. Uh, my colleague is going to talk about that later. Um, so obviously, I'm going to continue the theme of talking about regulation and what's going to happen to. I'm sorry, how, how do you click this? Можно просто следующий нажать? For those who want it in Russian, the slides are in Russian. Um, so this is the, uh, uh, it's not my map, I didn't draw that. This is the map from Bur Bloomberg. Uh, they're showing the regulation in different countries. We see the, uh, uh, the darker ones is strict, the white one is nothing. And obviously China is over there because they have a ban, you know that. Uh, we also have uh, Russia in the dark. Uh, the reason for that is uh, there is no regulation, but they have uh, police, they have uh, prosecution, prokuratura, uh, who do the regulation themselves without the law, you know that. Um, US, they have SEC, very similar thing to Russian. Um, and we have some specific countries in Asia who are thinking about regulating it, uh, banning it, and so on. But in general, it's still pretty much the uh, uh, open world for us. Um, this is just a comparison of countries. Obviously, the, the key, uh, key message from this slide is also coming from Bloomberg. It's not my data. Uh, you know the top countries. Which top countries you know right now for uh, Bitcoin and crypto in general in the world in terms of regulation? Come on, speak up. Malta. Switzerland, one. German. Malta, Germany, what else? Portugal. Gibraltar. Portugal. Borgers, yes. Uh, Japan? Korea. Japan and Korea. Singapore, a bit. And Georgia is coming, yes, obviously Georgia. Uh, so this is just a basic comparison, uh, what's good, what's bad, what's nothing, and so on and so on. We're going to continue. The next subject, um, Ukraine. Obviously you can't see Ukraine on this map because we don't have a law yet. But you can see Ukraine on this map. So this is the snapshot of similar web. You know, the website it basically uh, gives you analysis of any website you, uh, you, you're trying to search. And we are looking at the Bitfinex. Does this work? Yes. So Bitfinex, the uh, largest crypto in terms of BTC to US dollar. 
And uh, if you look at the May figures and look at the traffic, you'll see that the uh, number one traffic is coming from Russia, number two from Germany, number three from Ukraine. If you look at the other exchanges like Polonix, Bit Bitrex, no, Polonix, uh, Exmo, obviously, Wex, uh, Kraken, you'll see Ukraine and Russia there. In terms of Germany, uh, you probably know that most of the uh, crypto enthusiasts in Russia and Ukraine, they use VPN for the obvious reasons, because we have police, we have KGB, we have pro prosecutor, and so on and so on. So probably some of the traffic of Germany is also Russia and Ukraine. So what I'm trying to say, um, we are big on crypto in terms of country. We are a smaller country comparing to Russia, but we're big on crypto. And uh, that's the trend. If you uh, ever come to Ukraine, which I invite you to visit Kiev, uh, the regular meetup, though the small one is about 150 to 300 people. The good one is 1,000 people and up. This is the meetup. You know, it's not a conference, it's just a meetup. The conferences we have like nearly every single week, you know, it's like conference after conference after conference. So we are really big on that. The reason for that, what's the guess? Why do you think Ukraine is big on crypto? Come on, speak up. Sorry? Good one. What else? I'll tell you. Number one. We are number one in the world, probably number one, at least top five, corruption. We are good on that, very best, probably the best in Europe, definitely. And what comes with corruption? Uh, comes with the corruption, you don't trust the government. After not trusting the government, you don't trust the banks. And what's the alternative to bank? Crypto. Uh, right now, if you want to invest something, uh, some of your savings in Ukraine, the top pick would be uh, bank deposits. Uh, banks are paying you 15% uh, per year on your deposits, but people don't really trust the banks, so they don't bring the money to the banks. Uh, so the more popular option right now, and because people are really poor in Ukraine and getting poorer and poorer thanks to the corrupt government, uh, people are buying apartments. So they're buying a one-bedroom apartment, like really small one, 30, uh, 30 square meters, and that's their investment, and they're like hoping that they'll buy an apartment. They probably, uh, well, they're, they're at least thinking about that uh, you can rent it out and get some money back, and then the uh, prices will grow, you will sell it, and here we go, you're a good investor. No, it doesn't work like that. And uh, the third option, which is gaining popularity, is crypto. And we have a new study which says that 13%, uh, 13, uh, percent of uh, population who has access to the web has crypto. 13%. And this is official statistic that just been released two days ago. Uh, so Ukraine is really big on that. And we don't have any regulation. And we're big on that because we don't have any regulation. Because in our country, if you have regulation, they'll come to you and they take away whatever you have. Uh, but everything is changing. And the market is so big right now that uh, we need some rules of a game so the businesses can come and uh, develop local services. Because now we go to Bitfinex, now we go to the other exchanges outside of Ukraine. And uh, the most popular way of buying Bitcoin, what do you think is? What's the easiest way and uh, the, the most popular way of buying Bitcoin in Ukraine? What do you think? Cash. And there's a lot of cash, trust me. A lot of uh, people are going to the uh, uh, massage rooms to, you know, uh, you know um, repair their bags because you have to you know, carry a lot of uh, heavy money around. Um, but it, it's not scalable. We understand that cash is not scalable. We need, uh, uh, we need banking system, although we don't like them, but we need them because uh, banking system is trillions of dollars, which you can uh, uh, not easily, but exchange uh, between accounts. So the rules of the game. So we came up, we have a totally different approach from all the other countries. No offense to Belarus, to Kazakhstan, to Georgia. So the, our uh, approach to regulation or rules of the game is different. Uh, we as a community of uh, uh, people who do with the trading, with the mining, uh, with the software development, we join forces and decide, okay, instead of waiting for government to say what's the rules of a game and how they can regulate us, uh, we're going to create our rules which we like, 
uh, to have in our own country. And then we come to a government and say, this is what we want. Please uh, make it legal. And this is exactly what we are doing. So the core key points of the um, regulation. If you're exchanging crypto to crypto, forget about the government. The government that has nothing to do with that. So crypto uh, to crypto, it will be stated in the law that the government has no, nothing to do with that. Uh, mining, no regulation, no license. And just plug it in, off you go. Um, license activities. The only, only, again, license. It's the technical word. I hope there won't be a license. But uh, anything which would be regulated is the exchange an exchange. That's a thing in English, because in Russian we have Abmenka and we have Birja. And uh, so there's, uh, basically it's a difference between exchange and OTC. So the only, uh, these are the only two counterparties which would be regulated because they deal with uh, crypto and with uh, fiat. Uh, then tokenization, uh, we're going to put it in the, uh, uh, in the regulation with a smart contract. Uh, they will be equal to the regular contracts. By the way, uh, till date in Ukraine, we have to have the uh, apostille on your documents. If you don't have apostille on documents, the government will take, won't take it. Uh, you know, it's 2018. Uh, and as a regulated, uh, we think um, that the regulator should be uh, the commission, national commission, uh, national securities and, and exchange commission. So basically, it's SEC. Uh, but. Uh, instead of having direct regulation, we're thinking that uh, it should be a self-regulated organization, like a association, which would be uh, actually regulated, but it would be under the uh, SEC. That's our plan. And again, the association is a market. It's not the government. And the most important point, and that's the only point which government actually uh, interested in, taxes, how to uh, get taxes on that. So we proposed the flat rate, 5%. So anything which you receive from uh, exchange to your bank account uh, gets taxed at 5%. You pay 5% and it's your clean money, you can send it anywhere. You can buy Lambo, you can buy a house in Miami, uh, you can buy a similar house on the uh, top of a mountain in Belize, wherever you want to spend it on. Uh, no VAT and uh, the rules of a game uh, should not change until 2025. For uh, individuals, unfortunately, uh, there is also the, uh, what is it called? Military tax or something like that. Uh, one point, additional 1.5%. 1 Hopefully it will be uh, uh, cancelled soon, so it will be returned to 5% again. Uh, so again, uh, no taxation on exchanging crypto to crypto, tokens to crypto, nothing like that. And uh, if you're mining and you're exchanging uh, and getting fiat, you're also paying 5% flat. If you're not changing uh, to fiat, you're not paying anything. Um, we're looking further than just regulation. Uh, because of a corrupt government, we think that we should, uh, you know, get rid of a government. But it's not that easy. So we propose uh, putting in charge uh, Android. That's why we have Android on the bottom. So that's the new GERB. How about GERB in English? Symbol? Not symbol. Yeah, some of the board of arts, some of that, yeah. So basically, yeah, that's what we propose. And the other thing, why I showed you Ukraine as the big market. Um, well, to be honest, I, I listened to the presentation of Coin, CoinSpot, not. The guys from local exchange, I can't remember, yeah. I look at their, uh, their website and there's hardly any uh, bids for, to sell or buy crypto. And the reason for that, you don't have a critical mass. I'm sorry, but Georgia, Armenia, Kazakhstan, they're small countries, small economies, not enough people. So uh, I don't really believe that there will be a BDC to Larry or BDC to Drum uh, Paris, at least liquid Paris. We're talking about like thousands of Bitcoins. So uh, the only solution is to join a bigger market. And that's what we want to do. So we want to uh, connect all the ex-Soviet countries uh, together and create one huge liquidity uh, pool. I'm not saying that I'm going to do it just on my exchange. I'm just saying this is the idea for the, uh, for the whole, uh, um, whole plan as the uh, Blockchain Association of Ukraine. So uh, I invite you to Ukraine.
I invite you uh, to join uh, association. We're still drafting the law. By the way, the, uh, all the drafts are uh, on the Steemit and Goas networks. It's a blockchain uh, network. So you can have a look at them. Uh, everything is recorded. Most of the uh, meetings are recorded on video, so you can have a look at them. They're in Ukrainian and Russian. So everything is open, free and open source. You can, if you have ideas, please share with them, uh, share them with us. And uh, these are my contacts. And uh, Madhugop. <laughs> Questions? No? You have a question. Okay. Hello, my name is Raed from Saudi Arabia. I would like to ask you about the association and how you connect with the other associations of the other countries as your strategy uh, similar to your uh, plan for the uh, exchanges. Very good question. Um, um, sorry for the 5-0 uh, in the first match, by the way, but... Um, so associations, uh, we're going to, well, we plan to sign the agreement uh, memorandum between the Georgian Association and our association today. That's a start. Uh, we have a similar plan with the Belarusian, uh, Russian Association, and I haven't heard anything from Armenia, but anyway, we are open. The, the whole idea is we want to unite markets, and uh, we want to unite the players. We don't want to unite the governments. Uh, because that's not what we are fond of. So players, united, with pleasure. If you, are, are you founder of association or some of that? I hope so. You hope so. Anyway, find, found the association, we will definitely sign it with you. 5%, why 5%? Isn't it too much? Now imagine I'm trading with Bitcoin, so I pay 5% with the, for every deal? No, 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 no. This is... Um, Good question, thank you. So there are two scenarios. One scenario, uh, for example, you've been trading somewhere outside of Ukrainian exchanges or registered in Ukraine exchanges, and you just deposited the crypto, sold it for the uh, local currency or for the uh, dollar, wherever, and got the dollar on your uh, bank account. In that case, there is no proof, and it would be really hard to prove uh, at what price you bought the crypto. In that case, there will be a taxation of 5%. Uh, the other scenario is uh, when you had uh, fiat, you brought it on the exchange, you traded, you got some profit, and then you withdrew everything. You, the only 5% would be paid on the profit, not on the whole thing. Still 5% is too much. It will be very tough for some kinds of businesses, believe me. Because uh, especially if you... If you um, doing some your cryptocurrency for special tasks and you sell it to a special sec section of people yeah um, five percent may be, may be really too much even if you, if you, you name me, uh, well if you withdraw with a, with a credit card it's about normal it's about three to four percent right and you're going to five it's it's maybe uh, too much when you when you it, it, it's not correct to compare uh when you withdraw with credit card and uh when you withdraw from exchange because when you withdraw from the credit card you already pay taxes to the government and I, I'm, I'm just saying that uh, you this is basically you're legalizing whatever crypto that you have trust me five percent is nothing the guys who just did icos well for minus maybe it's fine but if you're not mining... And what do you do? Well, okay, I bought it in Ukraine, mm -hmm. kept it for, I don't know, two months. It went up for 10%, then I sell it back. So you take out fi ha half of 5% from the 10. I take 5 from the 10? Yeah. Oh, okay. And again, uh, we propose Ukraine as the new Cyprus. So the Ukraine would be the place where you, you know land your money and then you withdraw it to wherever you want. But you pay taxes here in Ukraine. Legalize it. <laughs> Why not? Um, yeah, I'm still in the, in the, okay. We're a corrupt country. First of all, thank you for interesting presentation and sharing Ukrainian experience with us. Uh, you mentioned the only licensed uh, entities uh, in terms of trading uh, Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies is two exchanges. 
could you elaborate on the scope of the licensing process? Not in very details, but on high level. And what are the main key issues where they are regulated by the commission you mentioned in Ukraine? Is this uh, anti-money laundering, AML? Yeah, exactly. Uh, so it's AML, KYC. The only reason we have to do that is because the uh, exchanges uh, hold uh, fiat accounts and crypto accounts. And fiat is regulated. So it would be uh, the uh, um, it would have to do it because uh, FAT will uh, tell us to do that. So uh, if you want to work with the banks, we have to be MLKYC. If it's MLKYC, there has to be a guideline. So this guideline is uh, is licensed. That's what I meant. So in terms of ML, you got KYC. Uh, do you is it requirement? Maybe it's too details, but if if you know, it would be great for us to know. Uh, do you, does the authority, regulator, requires identification of uh, the person who creates the accounts uh, at the exchange? Um, identification of the people who, are, who have a wallet at the exchange. Only if you're withdrawing fiat. Only, only in case of fiat, right? So if you withdraw fiat and you want to withdraw it, in that case you have to uh, uh, register your bank account with the exchange. Not in advance, but after, after you decide to withdraw it. That's the plan. Okay, yeah, yeah, sure. So if you want to just to trade crypto to crypto and you just trade it and left, no obligation because it's crypto to crypto. Okay, understood. And the second issue was consumer protection. What, what, what are the requirements for the uh, consumer protection? Are there any disclosure requirements? Can you, can you go into details about the nature of I can this? tell you to details because uh, that will be up to the uh, market what exactly we want. So it is not in the draft yet. So in no, the, no, no, we haven't, we haven't gone that. Laws, not really, not okay. really, no. But anyway, it won't be heavily regulated because if we overregulate it, uh, I mean, no one will come True. to Ukraine. We understand that. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much.